It's so great to see you. Are we having a good time? Yeah. Me too. I'm so excited. I just have to let you know ahead of time that I can't stay long because I'm being audited by the IRS, so i got to get going. <laughs> but you've been there, done that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I am here today to rev you up, but to also say thank you, because what you did for America is stellar. It was life-changing to the lifeblood of this nation, because you and the movement that we represent took the gavel out of Nancy Pelosi's hand in 2012. You did that. Now imagine where we were. In 2008, Barack Obama became the President of the United States. Nancy Pelosi, in 2008, was the Speaker of the House. Harry Reid was the Majority Leader in the Senate. In the Senate. One thing that the progressive left movement understood is that elections matter. Does that have your attention? Do elections matter? Absolutely, they matter. What is it that we're seeing right now on mainstream TV? The only thing they can talk about is the 2016 election. Why do you think that is? It's because they don't want us to think about the 2014 elections. Now, why are the 2014 elections so incredibly, powerfully important? The Senate, that's right, but also take a look at what the results have yielded from the 2010 election and the 2012 election. Prior to the 2010 election, did we have a Senator Ted Cruz? No. Rand Paul? No. Marco Rubio? No. Now imagine what the future holds with senators like that. Senators that are willing to stand up Take a stand and look at the House of Representatives. It isn't your grandmother's House of Representatives anymore. Now, in some ways, you might say, but we do have a lot of very good, powerful voices in the House and then the Senate. Are we there yet? No. Do we have a ways to go? Yes. Who's going to do it? We are. we are. That's right. We are going to do it. Because the Tea Party movement at its core is an intellectual movement. It's a movement that's based on ideas. And these are ideas that I would put up against any ideas in the world. There was a wonderful group who did over 200 years ago. In fact, not only did they put the ideas up, they contended for those ideas. To, point of their, to the point of their blood, their treasure, movement, their family, they laid everything on the line. I think I'm in a room right now with fellow patriots who are willing and who have laid it all on the line, and I thank you. I thank you. There is a temptation in our movement, and I've seen it, and perhaps you have too, that at a, at a defeat, and we get them, that at a defeat, when things don't go our way, Sometimes we can tend to take our marbles and want to go home. You ever been there? Yeah. You ever felt like that? Yeah. Is that the right thing to do? Yeah. Now remember in a State of the Union address, President Obama, when he was speaking of the government takeover of health care, said that we've been working on this for 75 years. Do you remember that? You see, the progressive left is so committed to achieving their objectives and to achieving their objectives that they go on for decades and decades and pass the torch and pass the baton. Freedom lovers do too. We pass the torch. We pass the baton. But part of our problem has been that we have listened too closely to what the mainstream media has to say about us. Now, we know who the mainstream media is. Why are we believing them? Now, think about that for a moment. It's important that we understand. Sun Tzu wrote a book called The Art of War. And the first two rules are you need to understand yourself, and you need to understand your enemy, in this case, a political enemy. Sometimes I wonder if we've passed the first test. 
do we understand ourselves? Because what we have to fight for should be motivation enough to keep us in the game. Take a look at these magnificent ideas. We are the adults in the room when it comes to dealing with our budget. That's the Tea Party, the adults in the room. We are also the conscience of the Constitution. Let me tell you what I mean by that. The Constitution isn't just a document that was created over 200 years ago that had some nice sounding phrases and that just seemed like a good idea at the time. It is so much more than that. Do you realize that the Constitution is one of the most magnificent documents to give us freedom economically. No other nation had a basis for its economy like the one that we were given in the Constitution. It is a constitutional right, for instance, to have your patents protected. Think of what that did to establish the United States as an economic powerhouse. What that document said is that your creative heft, not just your brawn, what you can produce with the strength of your arms, but your intellectual heft, your creativity, what you produce is your product, not for anyone to steal. They have to rent it from you. They have to buy it from you. Patents meant something. That was an American creation. We understood the power of private property. Do you understand the power of private property? The founders did. The Constitution did. Because if you have what is known as a capitalistic system of government, that means that you have individuals who have the capacity to be able to earn capital. And what is wealth? The definition of wealth is the, is the acquiring and holding on to capital. Without capital, you can't create wealth. You can't grow. You can't invest. What is it that is Barack Obama's agenda? He's fine if we want to uh, earn capital. He doesn't like it so much if we keep our own capital. Because he sees that our job is to be able to create it for the purpose of giving it over to him. That has nothing to do with our form of government and nothing to do with these magnificent ideas for which we contend. I'm here today to say to everyone in this room, our time for contending is here and it's now. And we focus between now and 2014 because elections matter on making sure we elect the most conservative people we possibly can to the House of Representatives who aren't ashamed of our beliefs and of our Constitution and, our, and of our Declaration. We do the same in the United States Senate. And we plug away and we stay with it. And like that little train that said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, we stay with it. We don't take our marbles. We don't go home. Because again, we have the ideas worth contending for. People knew that throughout time. I want to quickly end with this small history lesson. The world was safeguarded by what was called Pax Britannica. How many of you have heard of that? Pax Britannica. For about 100 years, the world saw the economic and military superpower of the world as Britain. That changed. It didn't stay that way. Somewhere around 1943, we moved from Pax Britannica to Pax Americana. Why? Because the United States became the economic superpower of the world. And when that happened, we also became the military superpower of the world. Does it matter? What happened in this last year? China became the economic superpower of the world in terms of trade. Now, I'm not here to say that the party is over, but I'm here to say it's time for us to sober up and wake up and recognize <laughs> that, in my opinion, the world with China as the economic and superpower militarily of the world does not, does not for safe to each of us does not make safe to each one of us our freedoms. 
economically or otherwise. Imagine if Russia is the economic and military superpower of the world. I think there's desire on the side of Russia. I think there's desire on the side of China. I think there's desire on the side of Iran. Do you want to be under a Pax Iran or a Pax China or a Pax Russia? You see, that is why ideas matter, and it's why we must contend. Again, I'm here to say thank you. You did it by stopping the, putting the brakes on the agenda of Barack Obama by taking that gavel out of Nancy Pelosi's hand. We have a very real, real opportunity to throw the sand in the gears and stop it and take the gavel out of Na uh, Harry Reid's hands this November. Let's not blow it. And when we do that, and when we do that, that means that the door is wide open for a generational shift by electing for president a constitutional conservative in 2016. If we do that, and if we do it right this year, let me tell you, not only will our children thank you, the world will thank you. The world will thank you. Because to where do the sane people of the world repair when they look for freedom? You all remember that case of the mother and the little boy who left Cuba in an inner tube over 90 miles of shark-infested waters to get to the United States. You see, we matter. We matter to the freedom-seeking, loving peoples of the world. And that's why it's to us. It's to us to contend for these ideas. And with a group in this room, I know that we have the intellectual ballast. I know we have the fortitude. And I know we have the energy to make it all happen. It's up to us. Let's take the challenge and get it done. God bless you, and God bless America.